Okay, this is part two of our piecewise functions notes. On the second half, we're doing the opposite of what we did before. So previously, we were given the equations, we drew the pieces, and then we drew them all together on one graph. Now we're given the graphs, we're going to individually decide their equations, and then we're going to take those equation pieces and write that in one large function notation for a piecewise function. All right, so this time we're starting with graphs and we're working towards the equation. So it says to write the equation for each of the following graphs, then find the domain of the thicker line. So real quickly, here's what we mean by the thicker line. You can see it's kind of dark here. This one is dark here. And this one, this is the dark piece that we're going to be looking at. So we're going to get the equation of the graph as it is, and then look at the dark piece to figure out our domain restrictions. So for this first one, um, if I was, you can do this in transformation form or slope intercept form. Um, I find slope intercept form faster, but I'm going to do transformation form here just to be consistent with using this equation here. But if you want to use slope-intercept form, that is fine as well. So we notice that our parent function here is x. So it has a vertical shift. The 0, 0 goes to 5. So vertical shift 5. So my k is 5. There's no horizontal shift. So h is 0. So think about this as your hk. And then we're going to go from here to this point here to see what our horizontal and vertical stretch are. So our horizontal stretch is 3. And that is an insider's lie situation for your b value. So if the x has got multiplied by 3 physically to stretch this way, you're going to do the inverse on the equation. So B is the reciprocal of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3 or multiplying by 1 third. And then going down for your vertical stretch is 2. So vertical stretch of 2 means A is 2. So you can write your equation as Y equals A, which is 2, times B, which is a third, times x minus 0 plus 5. And one, this is x minus 0 is just x. 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. So this is 2 thirds x plus 5. And then your domain restriction for this piece. So this is going off. So here's our left boundary. Here's our right boundary. So this is going to be negative infinity to negative 3. And at negative 3, you'll notice that the circle is open. So my domain restriction is negative infinity to negative 3, excluded at the end. So let's look at the next one. It's a quadratic. The parent function here is x squared. So let's look to see first where the origin shifted. This point is negative 1, 8. So that's my hk. Um, I'm going to use this point that's drawn here to figure out my vertical and horizontal stretch or compress. So I need to go this way too. So that's a, the horizontal stretch of 2, which is going to be an insider's lie situation. So horizontal stretch 2 means my b is going to be 1 half. And then the vertical stretch is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So vertical stretch of 5 means a is 5. So a is 5, b is a half, and my h and k are negative 1, 8. 
So I'm going to plug these into my general form. So for the general form, I squared the parentheses because I'm talking about a quadratic. Minus negative becomes plus one. You can leave your equation in this form. I did on my answer key, or you can multiply five by a half. And have this, whichever you like. And then the domain restriction is your left boundary to your right boundary. So the left boundary is at negative 3, and the right one is at 1. You'll notice they have both shaded in circles, solid circles, so they're going to get brackets here. Okay, I had to pause the video because I noticed that I was getting an, a wrong outcome and I realized that I didn't talk about the reflection. So when you see the graph pointing down from its original form, that means it's been reflected over the x-axis and a reflection over the x-axis means the A is negative. So I added my negative in here in front of the A value. So that makes a negative 5. So I forgot to mention that originally. OK, so then on this last one, we have a graph that started out as a parent function of 1 over x. And instead of looking for where the, well, we are going to be looking for where the origin shifted. But in this case, the origin is where the Ver, um, horizontal and vertical asymptotes intersect. So what we're looking for is these, where are these imaginary lines, these asymptotes are intersecting. And you'll notice they went over one, up two. So that is my HK values. Um, notice also that this is a reflection. The original shape looks like this. And these have reflected over. Um, in this case, you can call this a vertical uh, reflection over x or y. Um, I'm just going to say that the I'm going to use it for the a value instead of the b. So reflection means a is negative. And then we want to look for horizontal stretch or compression. Compression. And in class, we talked about this two different ways. Here's one way. You're looking for an over one, down one situation. So I should be able to go over one, down one, and land on the graph, but I don't. But if I go over one, down two, then I have a vertical stretch of two, and A is two. That's one way to do it. Another way is noticing that you could go over two, down one. And in that situation, that's a horizontal stretch of 2, and that would make your B value 1 half. So either one of these is correct. I'll show you the answer for both of them. If you say that A is 2 and it's negative, and you have your HK as 1, 2, you're going to have this equation. You're going to have 2 times 1 over x minus 1 plus your k value of 2. Oh, and a negative a. So there's my reflection. There's my vertical stretch of 2. This is my left shift 1 and my vertical shift 2. Now, if you felt like you saw the horizontal stretch instead of the vertical, here's what you're going to have written down. You're going to have the negative a and then you're going to have a B value of 1 half outside the parentheses for X minus 1. And then you'll still have your vertical shift of 2. And the reason why either of these work is because 1 divided by 1 half 
is equal to 2. So 1 divided by half is 1 times its reciprocal, or 1 times 2, which is 2. So these are equivalent, and I would take both of them. Now the domain restriction, so this is my solid piece right here. It's left, so it's going down here, it's going down here. So the left boundary is this 1. This is x equals 1. And the right boundary is infinity. So my domain is 1 to infinity, and 1 is excluded, so with a parenthesis, because it's never actually going to reach x equals 1, um, so it's excluded there. Right. So now that we have our equations for each of these three pieces, we are going to put them together. These are their shapes that we just talked about. To open on the left, here's our quadratic, and then here's our 1 over x. And here's how we write their pieces in one big function notation for a piecewise function. So we are going to go from left to right. So we're going to talk about this left piece first, and we're going to write it from top to bottom. So the left one goes on top, the middle one the middle, the right one on the bottom. So the top one we had 2 thirds x plus 5, and we're going to be writing the domain in inequality notation. x is less than negative 3. Then our quadratic piece was the negative 5, 1 half, x plus 1 squared plus 8, and the inequality notation for that domain restriction. And then I'm going to do the this form of the last piece. You could do the other form, if you like. This was the vertical stretch form, not the horizontal stretch form. So notice I have my function notation. Notice I do not have y equals, y equals, y equals in here. And I used inequality form. And the last thing I want to point out is from left to right, we write the equations top to bottom. So the left piece goes on top, the middle piece in the middle, the right piece at the end. That preserves the least to greatest order of your domain restrictions.